Thanks for joining us for the Nick Hart Show, presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Agrigold, ADG Architecture and Design Group, Baker Tax and Financial Services, Bratz Car Care, Cordray Insurance, Daylight Land Management, Davis Brothers, Du Bois County Garage Doors Incorporated, Duke Energy, Foster Construction, The Fort Branch Dairy Queen, Harper's Pub and Pizza, Hobstadt Summerfest, High Dorn Construction, Hobstadt Family Dentistry, Hen Orthodontics, Hillside Gardens, Hip Dentistry, JMCO Technologies, Kiesel Enterprises Incorporated, MyTech Systems, Pole Concrete Construction, Pro Rehab, Roberts Boring Trenching and Excavating, Robert Goob Vermillion Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge C, TYFL, Reinbrecht Homes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Sharer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton, by Engermeyer Electric, Banded Ag LLC, Bryant Auto Center Incorporated, by Center for Pediatric Therapy, by Country Barns, by Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Drosty's Jewelry Shops, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Jason Rainey, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Full Metal Armory, by Grandparent of Isaac O'Neill, Marianne O'Neill, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum LLC, Jarbo Tax Service, Casey Gray, Fuquay State Farm, by Cook Air, LNB Boutique, Little Miracles, Matt Walker Insurance, by Meisler Trailer Rentals, National Vet Health, Ripco Systems, by Titan Construction Partners, Whitledge Tree Service LLC, and by the Wabash Valley College Radio, TV, and Digital Media Department. And welcome to the Nick Hart Show here on this Tuesday night. I'm Kyle Peach, as always, joined by the Titans head coach, Nick Hart, talking about the Titans' win wire-to-wire on Friday night over the Wildcats of Mount Vernon in Pocket Athletic Conference play, 35-7 the final score. The Titans scored the first 35 points in the contest. Coach, let's uh, get your first impressions and thoughts uh, after after couple of days to reflect back on Friday night. Yeah, I mean, I think you start with our defense. I, I thought our defense uh, was lights out on, on Friday night. Our defensive line did a great job of, of controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, a lot of tackles for a loss um, and some sacks. And I thought those guys were, were really active and, and did a great job of of setting the tone for the entire defense, um, but was was really proud of our defense. I uh, thought they played great. I thought offensively um, there was great spots um, and there was some not so great spots. I think there was just some, you know, self-inflicted. It wasn't really clean. Um, you know, we, we had some some false starts. Some, uh, we had a fumble, um, some some drop passes. So it, it wasn't awful. Um but I thought there was a lot of unforced um, stuff that, that killed some drives. And, um, you know, when the talent gets a little bit uh, more even, um, you know, when you get in tight ball games, people are going to stop you. Uh, you. You can't stop yourself. So uh, we got a couple of weeks here to, to get a little bit more clean on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, but overall, I thought our kids played well and um, it was a great conference win. As you look at uh, kind of the scoring summary here with 7.44 to go in the first quarter, Devin Roberts scored on a two-yard touchdown run. Cam Novanti's kick was good. That made it 7 nothing. 
And, and that was the score as we went to the second quarter of play. 7 nothing Titans then with 8.51 to go in the second quarter. It was Devin again on a 21-yard run for a touchdown. Novotny missed the kick this time, and the score was 13 nothing. Then in the, later in the second, 3.16 remaining, Devin ran for a one-yard touchdown run. The point after was good, and it was 20 nothing Titans leading at the half. Then finally in the third quarter, Tanner Boyd passed to Brock Farquhar for three yards and a touchdown. The two-point conversion was good on a pass from Boyd to Sean DeLong to make it 28 nothing. The Titans would score just almost a little less than two minutes later as another Devin Roberts run, 54 yards and a touchdown. The kick would be good. It was 35 nothing. And then Mount Vernon would score with 10-10 to go in the game on a uh, pass for two yards out to make it 35-7, and that would be the final score. You you look at total offense, Coach, 325 yards of offense to Mount Vernon's 117. Rushing the football, uh, the Titans just allowed 63 yards rushing while gaining 153, passing the Titans 172 yards to Mount Vernon's 54. All those numbers again, really speak to your your defense and the job that they were able to do against the Wildcats. Yeah, um, I think, you know, the past few weeks, um, our, our defense has really started to uh, play at a different level. Um, so, you know, it's great to see as, as we're heading into the tournament here, uh, but those guys are, are doing a wonderful job on the defensive side. No turnovers for uh, the uh, Wildcats uh, this week. The Titans did uh, lose a fumble in the contest, but uh, so just a one turnover there. But uh, you know, as you as you get down to the home stretch, this is obviously the time of the season that you you want to be playing as close to perfect football as, as you can at this point. Yeah, um, and we're close. We we really are. Um, I think defensively, um, we're we're really really close. You know, like I said, offensively, just some of the the unforced stuff. Um, you know, we, we got to play a little bit more clean um but you know i thought we executed on that side of the ball you know really well whenever uh you know we weren't getting in our own way so um it's something we'll, we'll continue to work at and it's it's easy if it's one guy right if the one guy is making all the mistakes you, know, you can find somebody else but uh you know that's why football is a great team game it seems like we just have one guy you know making his one mistake um you know, for the game, and then that's 11, you know, plays that, that have gone badly. So um, we're close. Uh, we just, we, we got to just be a little bit more clean. The Titans, after the Week 7 win, are averaging 35.4 points per game. 35 was the score we hit on Friday night. And the defensively, just allowing 15 points per game, and that's a number that has gone down steadily, as you've talked about the last three weeks. Two touchdowns to Southridge, two to Heritage Hills, and one here to Mount Vernon. So defense is a warming up. The offense hanging with it right now. So a good time to be a Titan and a Titan fan as you get to the latter third of the season here with Princeton and Boonville. The remaining matchups before postseason play, and we'll talk about the matchup coming up with the Tigers here in just a bit as the Nick Hart Show continues. The Nick Hart Show is brought to you by Angermeyer Electric, Banded Ag LLC, Bryant Auto Center Incorporated, by Center for Pediatric Therapy, by Country Barns, by Daywig Meats of Hobstadt, Drosty's Jewelry Shops, Edward Jones Financial Advisor Jason Rainey, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Full Metal Armory, by grandparent of Isaac O'Neill, Marianne O'Neill, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum LLC, Jarbo Tax Service, Casey Gray, Fuquay State Farm, by Cook Air, LNB Boutique, Little Miracles, Matt Walker Insurance, by Meisler Trailer Rentals, National Vet Help, Ripco Systems, by Titan Construction Partners, Whitledge Tree Service LLC, and by Wabash Valley College. 
Support provided by Wabash General Hospital, now offering MyChart, giving patients secure digital access to their health information. Get access to clinical charts, prescribed medication, test results, appointment information, and more. The MyChart messaging service allows you to communicate with your provider to ask clinical questions. Patients may sign up for the service at WGHMyChart.com. MyChart at Wabash General Hospital, another example of people you know helping people you love. Welcome back to the Nick Hart Show. We'll start to zero in on the Titans' upcoming matchup with the Princeton Tigers coming up on Friday night, the final regular season home game at the Jewel. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff. Our pregame show will begin at 6.45. Before we get into that, let's take a look at uh, how things are stacking up in the big school division of the Pocket Athletic Conference. It's uh, looking more and more like that Week 9 matchup may be for the conference championship as Gibson Southern and Boonville both remain at 3-0 and in league play. Boonville has won two straight. The Titans' winning streak, by the way, up now to 18 games. Boonville had no problem with Princeton on Friday night, winning at 53 to nothing. Heritage Hills put it to Washington 77 nothing. The final score in that one. Uh, a look at the other scores involving big and school, uh, small school pocket teams. North Posey over Forest Park 28-20, Southridge over South Spencer 49-14, and Tell City beat uh, Pike Central by the final of 50 to 27. That sets up uh, this week in the uh, pocket. Boonville at Washington. Heritage Hills is out Southridge. Mount Vernon visits county rival North Posey. Princeton, of course, the county rival at Gibson Southern. You've also got Forest Park uh, at Pike Central. North Central is at South Spencer and Tecumseh's at Tell City, rounding out all the pocket games this week. So, uh, Coach, it kind of looks like uh, kind of the one-two punch, Gibson Southern and Boonville, setting up for that potential Week 9 showdown for the conference championship. Thoughts on uh, where things stack up right now in the PAC? Um, yeah, you know, I think both of us, uh, Coach Ward would probably said the same thing. We got to take care of business uh, this week uh, in order to, to get to next week. Um, but, uh, you know, if both teams are able to do that, uh, it would be, you know, an exciting time for that to kind of fall on week nine where, where you know it's for the conference championship. Um, back in the old PAC, um, we played Southridge week nine and that a uh, few times was, you know, for the outright conference championship. Um, it, it's kind of neat when it when it falls that way. Uh, but uh, you know, we both have work to do this week to 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 get a win and um, and to set that one up. Also, just to kind of a note to keep an eye on the postseason here as well. The Patriots of Owen Valley remain undefeated, a sixty-one-seven thumping of one A Eastern Green here on Friday night. So the Titans and Owen Valley are the undefeated teams in sectional 30 as we inch closer to a postseason play. Coach, I know you're, you're a guy that takes games one week at a time, but how much attention do you pay to how your sectional opponents are doing week to week? Um, About what you just read there, uh, you know, <laughs> just uh, scores um, and, and that type of thing. Um, you know, it's – one is, you know, football is kind of a week to week um, sport, as you said. So you kind of get, you know, dialed in to, to Princeton and what they're doing. And, and your prep goes into into that for this week. And then next week it'll be Boonville. Um, and the way the sectional is, you know, especially since we don't seed things, you, you, you know, if you're watching a bunch of film or paying attention too much, you, you might not even see that team as you as you go through the sectional. So. Um, you know, our draw is on sun this coming Sunday, um, so we'll have a little bit better idea about what that path looks like. Um, but as you mentioned, we, you know, not only do we have Princeton this week, but a, a possible conference championship next week, either outright or for a share or whatever it may be, depending on how this week goes for teams. Um, you know, we have a lot to take care of, um, you know, before we get to the postseason, but yeah, you start, you know, when Sunday comes out, you'll start to try and gather some film and stuff like that. So you're ready to go, um, you know, once that, that Boonville game's done with. But, uh, no, that's about it right now is just keeping an eye on how teams are doing and, um, you know, scores every week. Coach, with the draw coming up on Sunday, take us through uh, what, what that date is like for you uh, watching the draw unfold. I mean, is it – 
Is it something where you and the coaches are together? Are you are you paying attention? Is this like a, a March Madness kind of draw like we see uh, on TV sometimes in, in the March Madness tournament? Uh, take us through what uh, Selection Sunday is like for you. Well, we uh, we our, co- our kids get together um, and, and watch it, and then uh, our coaches will be together just because it kind of falls um, – during our Sunday film game planning meetings. Um, so we'll kind of adjust our schedule to, to be able to watch it. And, you know, I'm really nice to ping pong balls this week. Um, so hopefully they're nice to us on Sunday when they come out of the machine. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's exciting. Um, it's uh, one way to, to set up a tournament, I guess. But um, it's it's exciting to whenever it comes out to, to kind of know where you're at. But then – you know, that being said, um, you know, it, it's – I wish they did it after week nine um, because then to, you know, get dialed in, every, everything's about the postseason. Um, but when you have a big game week nine, I, I think it can sometimes take away from that a little bit, um, whether it's in coverage in, you know, 15- to 18-year-olds' minds or, or whatever it may be. Um, I, I think there's a probably a better time that, that they could do that, but nobody's asked me, so uh, we'll, we'll tune in on Sunday and, and find out, you know, where we're going, and who we're playing. You and I both have a little Illinois football history in our in our background, so the uh, playoff formats are certainly different. And, and I love the phrase "be nice to ping pong balls." All of Titan Nation needs to be nice to ping pong balls this week. It's a, it's crazy that it comes down to that, but but there you go. You want them on our side uh, come Sunday. As we continue on, we'll get you set for the Titans' Week 8 matchup with the Princeton Tigers, the final home game of the regular season, when we come back on the Nick Hart Show. You're listening to the Nick Hart Show, presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Agrigold, ADG Architecture and Design Group, Baker Tax and Financial Services, Brett's Car Care, Cordray Insurance, Daylight Land Management, Davis Brothers, Du Bois County Garage Doors Incorporated, Duke Energy, Foster Construction, The Fort Branch Dairy Queen, Harper's Pub and Pizza, Hobstadt Summerfest, High Dorn Construction, Hobstadt Family Dentistry, Hen Orthodontics, Hillside Gardens, Hip Dentistry, JMCO Technologies, Kiesel Enterprises Incorporated, MyTech Systems, Pole Concrete Construction, and Pro Rehab. All right, as the Nick Hart Show continues on here tonight, we'll get you set for the matchup with the Princeton Tigers uh, for the Titans, a county rivalry matchup. It'll be uh, all eyes of Gibson County on this one, which was the uh, Titans play host to the Tigers on Friday. Two programs that uh, really over the last couple of years have trended in opposite directions, the Tigers have now lost 11 straight games dating back to the final four games they played last year. You have to find the win column this year. Obviously, um, it's a game where the Tigers would, would love to be competitive, would love to compete and, and have a good showing against a, a rival like the Titans. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the going's been tough for the Tigers. Thoughts on Princeton coming into this one? Yeah. Um, you know, Coach Schneer is doing a good job. Um, they're really young and um, you know, their kids play hard. I think they do some things defensively that, that can cause confusion. Um, so it'd be important for us to have a, a good week of prep um, with, with their scheme and stuff. I think it can cause some, some confusion um, to opposing offenses. So, um, you know, just making sure we're dialed into that and, and following our rules and assignments, um, you know, is important. And, um, you know, we know that they're going to be come in here ready to play and, and we have to match that um, it's senior night. And so you have another, um, you know, chance for distractions. We kind of talked about homecoming last week, senior night kind of falls in, in, into that same thing where you're a little bit out of routine and um, you know, we got to be ready to play. And, and I think it's important that at this time of the year, um, you know, you're focused on you as a team and, and where you're at and, and preparing well and, and playing at a high level. Um, Cause as we talked about the ping pong balls, you know, it, it's, it's right around the corner. Um, so there's not much time to, Hey, we're going to fix this or fix that. Like it, it it's gotta be fixed. Um, so, 
you know, I, I think we've been playing well. Um, I think there's some things we can do better. Um, but, you know, you, you got to kind of hit that peak as you head into to week nine in the postseason. And um, so, you know, really important for us to come out and, and play well and um, hopefully be able to take care of business. Coach, I ask you each week what keys are to success for the Titans. I'm assuming getting better is going to be one of those. What are the keys this week? What are you looking to accomplish? Well, I think offensively, I think defensively, I you know, keep playing at, at the level we are. And they do some stuff, you know, with with formations and just making sure we're lined up right and, and ready to play. But offensively, just, um, you know, eliminating some, some of the unforced errors uh, that we've had the past couple of weeks. And um, like I said, they, they do some different things defensively um, that, that can cause you some problems uh, schematically. So just making sure we're – we're identifying who's where and, and what our responsibilities are. Sounds like the uh, keys to success for the Titans on Friday night as they host county rival Princeton on senior night. We'll take our final break when we come back. I want to talk a little bit more about the Titan senior class with the coach. That's as we continue. Stay with us. The Nick Hart Show is presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, made possible by Robert's Boring Trenching and Excavating. Robert Goob Vermillion, Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge Seed, TYFL, Ryan Brecht Homes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Sharer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, and by Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton. Our final segment is here on this edition of the Nick Hart Show, and it is senior night for the Titans, the final regular season home game on Friday as the Titans will play host to the Princeton Tigers. Senior night, uh, always uh, uh, an important night every year to recognize the senior class. Uh, obviously, a lot of the kids on the uh, in this senior class, part of a, a group that uh, has done something never done before, and that's bring home a state championship. And following that, in a year that uh, we have talked about, not sure how the Titans would look after so much of last senior's class departing, but here you sit, ranked in the top of the state, 7-0 and record, and a chance for you, Coach, to talk about th this group of seniors as we go into senior night. Yeah, i um, super proud of these guys. I think, you know, kind of coming in, um, it's not the biggest class uh, we've ever had, um, and I think it's probably actually one of the smaller senior groups that we've had. Um, so I think when you graduate the, the group that we did and you have a smaller senior group coming back, like leadership, um, some of those type of things uh, become a concern for our coaching staff. Um, and these guys have, have stepped up and, and passed that test with flying colors. So, um, you know, they, they've done everything that they need to do to, to help our program be successful. Um, and so what? Uh, you know, I'm extremely thankful for this group and, and proud of, of what they've been able to accomplish. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been a fun four years and, and there's a lot of great parents in there that have, have done a lot for us over the four years, too. So I think, you know, as a former kid, um, senior night wasn't a big deal to me. I know it was to my mom and my dad probably more than it was to me. Um, and, and I still kind of feel that way that like, you know, that's, um, we're honoring their parents, um, as, as much as we are the, the seniors that, that have, have done a lot for us. So, um, you know, hopefully, uh, we, we have a few more home games, uh, that they get to play in, um, as we go through the postseason. but, uh, you know, it's definitely a big deal and, and, uh, really proud of these guys. So it's senior night on Friday night. The Titans will host the Tigers of Princeton. Kickoff is set for 7 o'clock at the Jewel. Our pregame show on 89.1 will begin around 6.45. The march towards the postseason continues, and it will continue on Friday night. Coach, good luck, and we'll see you then. All right, thanks. That's Titan coach Nick Hart. That is the Nick Hart Show on this Tuesday night. We'll see you next week and at the Jewel on Friday night. So long, everybody. 
Thanks for joining us for the Nick Hart Show, presented each week by the Gibson Southern Football Boosters, including Agrigold, ADG Architecture and Design Group, Baker Tax and Financial Services, Bratz Car Care, Cordray Insurance, Daylight Land Management, Davis Brothers, Du Bois County Garage Doors Incorporated, Duke Energy, Foster Construction, The Fort Branch Dairy Queen, Harper's Pub and Pizza, Hobstadt Summerfest, High Dorn Construction, Hobstadt Family Dentistry, Hen Orthodontics, Hillside Gardens, Hip Dentistry, JMCO Technologies, Kiesel Enterprises Incorporated, MyTech Systems, Pole Concrete Construction, Pro Rehab, Roberts Boring Trenching and Excavating, Robert Goob Vermillion Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, Scotty's Lawn Equipment, Tim Barge C, TYFL, Reinbrecht Homes, Stodgill Funeral Home, Stodgill Monuments, in memory of Darwin and Eric Callis, by Vertical Tile Incorporated, Wash Boss, Young's Auto Body, Johnson Commercial Mowing, in loving memory of Zach Bailey, by Julia's School of Dance, Kathy Salmon Photography, Like Transport, Make Your Mark, Shearer Monuments, Southern Indiana Tire, United Fidelity Bank, Stan and Teresa Dove, by Air Evac Life Team, Ameriprise Financial, Jeremy Overton, by Engermeyer Electric, Banded Ag LLC, Bryant Auto Center Incorporated, by Center for Pediatric Therapy, by Country Barns, by Daywig Meats of Hobstock, Drosty's Jewelry Shops, Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Jason Rainey, by Fort Branch Car Wash, Full Metal Armory, by Grandparent of Isaac O'Neill, Mary Ann O'Neill, by Heritage Federal Credit Union, Heritage Petroleum LLC, Jarbo Tax Service, Casey Gray, Fuquay State Farm, by Cook Air, LNB Boutique, Little Miracles, Matt Walker Insurance, by Meisler Trailer Rentals, National Vet Health, Ripco Systems, by Titan Construction Partners, Whitledge Tree Service LLC, and by the Wabash Valley College Radio TV and Digital Media Department.